Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be uh, designing and making a single bottle magic wine bottle holder. I'll also be making a double bottle magic wine bottle holder in another video, so make sure you subscribe uh, so you can get a notification for when I post that. I'm going to be using a MATLAB program that I wrote to design it today, uh, but don't worry, you don't need the code uh, because I'll just give you the dimensions. However, if you do want to design your own, I'll be posting my MATLAB code, an Excel file, and a C++ code so you can use whatever you feel most comfortable with. Uh, I'll be posting those in the video description, so check that out. Uh, I'll also be posting other videos about how to use each of these, uh, so that'll also be in the video description when they become available. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to be making uh, the wine bottle holder from this piece of maple that I bought from Lowe's for less than five dollars. I'll actually be able to make both a single and a double wine bottle holder from this single piece of wood. Uh, so let's start out with the code. I'll be going over the details of this code in another video, but we can quickly just go through the steps and it will give us the dimensions we need. Uh, there are different panels here outlined in blue, uh, breaking this up into easily manageable sections. The first is the specification of what wine bottle we will be using it with, so that's in the bottle parameters. Uh, the default is a Bordeaux bottle, as you can see here, uh, but there are also options for a Burgundy bottle or a custom uh, bottle. Uh, I'm going to leave this as is. And in the wood parameters panel in blue down here, we can choose what kind of wood we are designing for. The default is pallet wood, as you can see, but I'm going to switch it to my Lowe's maple. Uh, and I already uh, calculated the uh, density of this uh, particular piece of wood. You can also see that there are options for other woods or custom uh, input values, um, but I'll leave it as this uh, Lowe's wood. The last panel we need to pay attention to is the run parameters panel up here. And here we set the thickness of the wood, the wood width and aesthetic parameter called add length percentage and the angle we want the wood to be with respect to the table. And that's it. And now we can press the design bottle holder button. And first I just want to change the wood thickness because my piece of wood is actually a half an inch thick and the width is 3.5 inches. I'm going to leave these two the same and we'll press the button here and you can see our picture pops up of a side view of what it's going to look like. And we have some of our solutions down here. I can click metric units design again and I'll switch it to metric. Um, but I'm going to leave it like this. In the solution panel we can see the measurements we need to begin building. I'll throw these up on the whiteboard so you can see what they mean. But before I do I want to draw your attention to the whole section. So the down here where it says hole. Uh, which is where the bottleneck uh, will be going through the wood. So you can probably guess that for different sized holes, the bottle will be either lying flat with respect to the table or maybe up at an angle. And this is dictated by the hole size, and I've noted uh, the hole diameters in the solution here. So you can see that there's the minimum hole diameter and the flat hole uh, diameter. The minimum hole diameter is the diameter of the bottleneck, and it will make the bottle stand up at an angle perpendicular to the wood. The maximum hole diameter is the diameter that will make the bottle lie flat with respect to the table. And you can see that's actually what's plotted here. Uh, using this slider down here, uh, I can see what the design will look like with different sized holes. So I start by default on the maximum hole diameter, so the slider's all the way to the right, and you can see that it's giving me a 1.9142 inches. Same down here, okay? But if I scroll all the way to the left, all the way down there, uh, now you can see that we're at the minimum hole diameter and the bottle is perpendicular uh, to the uh, wood. You'll also note that the color changes to red, and I'll go into this in the video where we talk about the math, but I would recommend staying in the green range, not going into the red or uh, the yellow even. So staying somewhere in the green range. Oops. Uh, I like the way that the slightly angled bottle looks, so I'll be using a 1.5 inch uh, hole diameter. So if I keep clicking this, bringing it to where it's about 1.5 inches, um, then this is what the design, the final design should look like. I also happen to have a 1.5 inch drill bit or hole saw already, so that aided in my decision. Uh, so now let's get to the whiteboard. Here are the schematics that I've drawn on the board uh, using the dimensions from the MATLAB code that you just saw on screen. So here's just an isometric view. Uh, we know that the width of the, of the wood is 3.5 inches. We know that the thickness is 0.5 inches. And this is from the code. This is the 9.39 inches for the total length of the, of the wood. And and now I've drawn another view that's just straight on, head on with the hole in here. The full length again is 9.39 inches, the width again is 3.5 inches. And now the whole center, uh, the 
uh, in the MATLAB code it says L to hole, so the length to the hole. That's 6.91 inches from the base up to the center of the hole. And the center uh, and the hole has a uh, diameter of 1.5 inches based off of what I chose just to have that bottle angled slightly. But you could put it anywhere in between the minimum hole diameter up to the maximum hole diameter. Uh, and then now looking at this slanted view, side view, uh, you can see the hole again here. That hole is 6.91 inches from the bottom and the hole length is 9.39 inches from this point all the way up to this point and then we'll cut off afterwards and the angle that it's going to make with respect to the wood or sorry with respect to the table is going to be 45 degrees and again that whole diameter is 1.5 inches so now let's uh, get to cutting the wood we can draw on the wood where all these uh, things are going to go and then we can start cutting the wood now let's draw the markings on the piece of wood here uh, just forgive me that it's upside down right now um, so on the ruler here, you can see I'm in inches, and on the top here, uh, bottom to you guys, uh, it's in divisions of sixteenths, and down on here, up until a foot, it's in divisions of thirty seconds. So our dimension for the total length of this piece of wood is 9.39 inches. Um, and so what is that on the 32nd scale? So you can say that 3 eighths is the same as 6 sixteenths is the same as 12 30 seconds. And if you look at 12 30 seconds, it's, uh, or 3 eighths, it's slightly under 0.4. And if you look at uh, when you go to, so we said that it was actually 12 30 seconds. If you go to 13 30 seconds, it's slightly above 0.4. So if I draw the line or I make my mark in between the uh, 3 eighths division and the next line over, which is actually going to be 13 30 seconds, then we can use that uh, value as where we make our marking. So it's kind of right at the 3 eighths in the next one. So it'll go something like that. I can make another uh, marking up here real quick and I'll use my square okay, to draw a straight line between the two like this. And so that's gonna be the total length of the, of the wine bottle holder when we hold it up uh, like that. Now let's draw the line for the hole, which we know is gonna be 6.91 inches from the bottom. So uh, in the similar way, 6.91 is approximately, um, it's gonna end up being 29.30 seconds. So we know that the, uh, if we're looking at that six here, we know that the 7 eighths is actually the same as uh, 14 sixteenths, which is the same as 28.30 seconds. So if we go 28.30 seconds plus 1.30 second, we get 29.30 seconds. And so I'll do, make a little marking there, and we'll draw a horizontal line across again. Okay, and so we will get that line right there a square just to get a nice straight line across approximately right there and so that's where the hole is going to be somewhere in here and it's going to have a 1.5 inch uh, diameter now we want the hole the 1.5 inch diameter hole to be halfway uh, between the width of the wood so I've set my square up such that uh, such that this right here, this point right here is at 4.5. And this is because when I line it up on the edge, I know that my piece of wood is 3.5 inches. So when I line it up here, you can see that this side over here, it's a little skewed from the camera, but this is at one right here and it goes to 4.5, which is the same as going from uh, zero to 3.5. So based off of this, uh, we know that half of 3.5 is 1.75. So to draw the point where the uh, middle of the circle will, will be, we need to just take one plus 1.75, which is 2.75. So this is two, this is 2.5 here, and this point right here is 2.75. So I'm gonna make sure I'm on my line. Oops, and I'm gonna draw a little point there at the 2.75. And you can see that's, I'll just make this thicker because it doesn't really matter. And that's the point where we're gonna draw where we're gonna drill our hole right there. Okay, so now we're gonna cut the wood. I'm gonna put it on my uh, miter saw, make sure everything's all squared up, and you gotta make sure that the right blade, I'm cutting, this is the piece that I want. So I'm making sure that the right side of the blade is on the line, okay, like that. And then I'm gonna lock it down, like this. And then we can make this cut here. I'm gonna make the angle cuts now, so we need two more cuts to get those, uh, the nice looking angles on here. And if you see the hole on my wood piece here, I'm gonna assume that it's gonna rest like this on the table, which means down here, I'm just gonna roughly draw 
a line like this. And I'll roughly draw a line like this at the top as well. I know it's going to be 45 and I'll set it on the miter saw so I don't need to worry about exactly drawing this line. Same on the other side, it's going to be something like this. Just roughly draw it and then same at the top. Okay, and so it'll sit like this on the table. And the way that we, we're just gonna cut this, we're gonna turn the miter saw to a 45 degree angle, and then I'm just gonna put this in the, uh, vertically like this, and make sure that the blade edge is right at the corner there, such that we're not cutting off any length of the piece. And we've accounted for this in the code. I'm gonna turn the miter saw now, so I can take this piece of wood out. I'm just gonna unscrew the bottom here, and there's angle markings down here. So I'm gonna lift this guy up, and I'm gonna move it over, until it gets to 45. You can hear it kind of lock in. And then I'll tighten it up like this. And now we can make our cuts. I'm gonna make the two cuts now. I'm not gonna clamp it down because it's too difficult when it's vertical, but um, so you should just be able to hold this against the edge here if you have a miter saw. Otherwise you can use a just a normal saw, whatever is easiest for you. So I'm gonna make sure that the blade edge lines up with that corner so I'm not cutting too much off. Okay. Looks pretty good here. So that's the first cut, looking good. And then we we'll just make sure that we've drawn the second cut the same angle, just for sanity check. And I'll put it like this. And we should be able to cut the same way, making sure that we're not cutting off more than, uh, than we should. Okay, and here it is. So it'll sit on the table like that. It should be a 45 degree angle or close enough to it based off of the accuracy of my miter saw here. And so now all we need to do is drill that hole and uh, finish it off with some sandpaper and then stain it. Let's get to it. All right, now we're getting ready to, uh, to drill this guy. And I'm using this hole saw and it's tough to see on here, but I'll take a picture of it, but it's a one and a half inch diameter hole saw. And what it comes with in these packs uh, is this guy, which is the centering bit, and, uh, and then this guy, which you screw on from the top. So what you do is uh, you put this through the bottom like that. Okay, and then we'll put this guy in, screw this guy on like that, tighten it up. And then we'll put this into our drill. and we should be good to drill the hole. I'm gonna clamp this guy to the table with one of these uh, clamps here, uh, just to keep it steady while we're drilling the hole. You gotta make sure the clamp doesn't get in the way of the actual drill either. And you don't wanna clamp it too tight so that you get a hole in your piece of wood either. I think you can see that one's not going anywhere. And so now it's time to drill. So we'll just take this, take this center bit and line it up with the hole, or with the uh, dot that we drew. And so that's right about there. And then we'll just go straight through this guy. Okay, and the hole is now finished, as you can see. Quick heads up after you've drilled it out, don't touch this with your bare hand. Even touching with these gloves is pretty hot. It's gonna be really hot just because of how fast we went through this hole. Um, the wood isn't, isn't burned, but it just you'll, you might have seen it smoking a little bit while we've gone through. And this piece of wood is actually stuck pretty good in there, but what you can do is just take a, uh, an Allen wrench and, and push it out uh, when it cools down. So I'm gonna leave that over there because we don't need it right now. But we can take this guy off and we'll drop that on the floor for good luck. And here you go. We can clean up the edges with some sandpaper, but this is pretty much the finished product and we can te actually test it out to see if it to see if it works. Before we test it, I'm actually going to just clean up the edges a little bit just so that I don't get any uh, splinters. You can do this with any of the any grid sandpaper. I just have fine super fine grid on here right now. So that's what I'm using. You don't want to sand these down too much though because you want this to be a nice flat edge. If you start sanding this down or this down, you're not going to have a flat edge for it to sit on. So really just get the sharp edges off of there and that's about all you should do on those edges. The real problem is in here where you've drilled the hole. So you can take a piece of sandpaper and go around that just to, uh, just to clean it up. 
And you can do some cleaning up later when we're staining it too. I'll get rid of that. Okay, last thing to do is to check that this works. So we'll take the wine bottle holder that we made, take a bottle of wine, plug it in to the hole, and just with some fine tune adjustments here, you can see that it does indeed work. The neck, uh, the half neck is approximately at the half uh, thickness of the wood as it should be, and the angle of the bottle with respect to the table is, a, is slight, uh, and that's based off of the fact that we drill, drilled that uh, 1.5 inch hole in the piece of wood, so you can compare this to the code and see that it's actually quite close. Um, so the last thing to do really is just to put uh, your favorite finish onto this uh, piece of wood and then you're, you're good to go. Well, there you have it. A simple way to design and build a single bottle magic wine bottle holder. Here are some images of the finished product. It's actually a different one I made, but you get the point. I hope you enjoyed the video, so please leave comments or suggestions and subscribe if you want to be notified when I post my double bottle magic wine bottle holder videos. As a little teaser, here's the result of that build. I'll be posting a lot of resources as they become available, that is when I finish them. So check out the video description for those, and thanks for watching.